Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Y'all come on in. It's time for Ridiculous Faith. It is time for Ridiculous Faith. Y'all come on in, share the video. Let people know we're on here this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm excited. Excited about today. We're talking about the power of a resurrected life. The power of a resurrected life. Y'all come on in. Good morning. Great morning to you, Miss Yvonne. Y'all come on in. Share the video. The power of a resurrected life. I get to get up because he got up. And, and so every day I walk, I wake up with a this sense of resurrection power. Because uh, yesterday could have whooped you. Yesterday could have been a lot. But but God gave you brand new mercies. Um and favor stalks you every day. I need I need y'all to type that. I want y'all to share the video and type favor stalks me every day. Every day, God, God is trying to figure out another way to bless me. He don't have to figure it out. He's he's positioning another way to bless me. And so, yeah. So um, here we're going to go. Um, I want you to share the video. And we're going to go back to our notes from yesterday. And we're going to talk about the power of a resurrected life. When Jesus came on the scene, he wanted people to get up. You got Jesus in your life. He commands you to get up. Lazarus, take up thy bed and walk. You, you, you have the power to get up. God never wants you to stay in a downtrodden state. Peter didn't catch no fish. Get up. You, you, know, you understand what I mean? He called the fish to wake up. Y'all didn't get it. He called the fish to wake up. Heretofore. Nobody caught nothing. But when Jesus comes on the scene, everything has to go. I need y'all to get that. I know, I know a lot of people ain't on right now. Y'all share the video so people can get on. When Jesus comes on the scene, everything has to get up. To you, you hear that? Uh, wh when the man was at the pool of Bethesda, he had been there for 38 years uh, and, 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 and was in a situation and people were getting healed. And it was said that whoever gets in the sheep pool first was healed. And when Jesus came on the scene, he said, do you want to be made whole? He's like, that's why I'm here, Jesus. Then he said, get up. <laughs> so, so, so you have to understand that, that you have get up power. You, you do, you can get up from here. Uh, one of the things that people, when they describe cars, they say it has, it has pickup. It has pickup. You, you, you drive a regular car. And 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 you just you know you gotta mash the gas and it's like and it and it's it slowly inclines, it slowly speeds up, right? You get in my car, you touch. I mean, act like you want to touch. Act act like you want to touch that pedal. And people who've never driven it before, your head go back because you you took off. The pickup. I declare right now that that's the kind of pickup you have. Now, some of you, you know, you 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 talk about being on the runway, being on the runway. You know, a, a, a jet has to be on the runway for some time. <laughs> Latoya said you be zooming. Uh, the, the 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 jet has to be on the runway for some time. Then it slowly takes off. I, but a rocket ship, y'all don't want to shout with me. A rocket ship is going. It 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 goes straight up. I dare you to say I'm going straight up. I'm going straight up. And so so this re resurrection power, my granddaughter, I know every day that's what you're going to hear because that's what people do. They talk about their kids and grandkids. And um, you think you did a good job. I'm rubbing and patting and rubbing and patting at 10 months old. Kennedy, rubbing and patting and rubbing and patting. I had to watch them yesterday. Went to, you know, picked them up from daycare. Just had the best time of my life. I'm rubbing and patting and rubbing and patting and rubbing and patting. I, I put her butt down in that crib and she pop up. <laughs> That's you going to have, you can really have getting up power like Kennedy. <laughs> she just, I mean, as soon as you put her head down, she pop up straight up. I, I'm here to tell you. That regardless of how the enemy tries to put you down, put you down, put you down, you're going to pop up. Like your, your comeback game is so strong. I need you to understand that you're resilient. I'm a resilient person. I mean, I could be hit with a blow and then I'd be like, and she's already up again. And she's up again. And she's up again. All right. 
So, so let's talk about this resurrection power. You cannot listen to this. Stop saying yes to God if you don't ever expect. expect ex, ex, uh. Stop saying yes to God if you don't ever expect to have to get up from some situations. If you, you, you listen, if, if you think a yes means granny said it would be always howdy, howdy and never goodbye. It's not going to be like that. But but you have to understand that I have the power to get up. God would not have told uh, Lazarus to take up his bed and walk if he couldn't take up his, his bed and walk. So God is not going to command you to do something you can't do. Now he, that's, that'll be cruel. That'll be cruel. Come on. Come on. Grab it. Grab it. You know, so so. So I got to understand your pickup game has been strong. I mean, I just want you to comb through your life. Toy, look, comb through your life. Think about relationships. Think about things. You have been through. I'm talking to all of you now. Listen, you've suffered through some things that other people lost their mind. with cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, before we get started, before we get started, let's pray for the families in Baltimore. I'm, I woke up to it and I'm just like, are you kidding me? I pray for the families. I pray for recovery. I'm, I'm believing God for supernatural miracles in Jesus' name. I also want you to pray for um, Dr. Kyle Allen. Um, that's um, Talana's husband. Um, he's getting a, 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 a prayed upon. We prayed upon this, um, a, a kidney transplant. And that is taking place as we speak. So we call his body healed and whole. We bind up any spirit of rejection. We 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 thank God that his body is going to be better than it was before he had the ailment. We thank you by the stripes of Jesus, he's already healed. We thank you for his son, and we call his body healed, who was his donor. And we believe God for supernatural results. Are y'all shout? We believe God for super. We can shout. We don't got to feel sad. We can shout for supernatural results. Healing is the children's bread, and we shall eat from it. And so um, we, we just praise God for that. But we want to pray for those families and pray for um, pray for um, Talana and her husband and all of that. Amen. All right. So let's talk about this resurrected, the resurrected life, this resurrected life, this resurrected life beyond. You know, you understand what I'm saying? We got to we got to we got we to gotta talk about this. So yesterday we talked about how to resurrect your dreams. Number two, day two, we're going to talk about how to resurrect your vision. You got to see better. I went to get glasses. Let me pray. God, open up our eyes to see. Amen. Okay, get a vision. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> I went to get glasses. I went to my first, I, I, I guess I went when I was a child. I, I always uh, prided myself to have 20-20 vision. I didn't wear glasses. Was it going to cover up this face? No, you know. Um, and so I went to the doctor, the eye, eye doctor at about 40, because I was, when you're in denial about knee, knee and glasses, you do all kinds of tricks with stuff. You like, you know, you know, zooming in and out with your hands trying to read stuff. And um, and I said, well, maybe I need some readers. So I would I would buy readers, you know, you know, from the store. And then I said, maybe I maybe maybe just maybe. Oh my God. Uh, Yvonne said, my father had a liver transplant and the whole process and recovery was a miracle. Well, we speak to God. See, the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. And so we believe God that the same God that did it for Yvonne's father does it for Talana's husband. And that is, and that's the final answer. So I go to the um, ophthalmologist and she, and she said, hurt my feelings. She, she really hurt my feelings. She said, um, I'm 47 years old. And she said, you should have been here seven years ago. First of all, ma'am, don't do that to me. She said, you should have been here seven years ago. What, what am I, what am I, what are you, what are you saying? What are you saying? I have adjusted my life and accepted the dysfunction that I'm in. Teach girl. Some of you have accepted what's going on right now and just made an adjustment. You just made an adjustment. So even though I got to zoom in and zoom out while I'm reading, it's not normal. Everybody else is not doing. Everybody who's accepted the fact that they needed glasses, they're reading right. 
What are you settling for simply because, listen to this, listen to this, because you won't do what's necessary to see clearly. I'm talking about vision. I want you to resurrect your vision. So you got to do what's necessary. I, 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 I function better. Guess what? Less headaches. I didn't know all that was attached to vision. Teach. I need children. Some of you got headaches in your life, and I'm, I'm seriously, because you, listen to this, won't do what's necessary to adjust your vision. You're holding on to things, people, places, and things that's messing with your vision. So let's talk about a resurrected vision. Number one is vibrancy. Vibrancy. I want you to think about vibrancy. Live with vibrancy, bringing color and energy to your dreams and daily experiences. Let's look at some scripture for it. Um, uh, John 10, 10, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, destroy, but I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. Vibrant. That sounds like a vibrant life. I'm supposed to live a colorful life. I bring flavor to the table. When when when, when you get me, you're going to get, we, who, who, we, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. What flavor are you supposed to bring? Are you just bland and adapting and being average? I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm going to cause you to resurrect. Resurrect your identity today. Resurrect your flavor today. So many people try to mute who you are when God made you. But you going around talking about he, I'm uniquely and wonderfully made. I'm a royal priest. You don't act, you don't act unique at all. You act like every other whoever does what you do. I know that ain't me. When you came on, you're like, she's a preacher. Okay, but she kind of funny and she'd be busting out. And so I, I bring color to the table. I bring flavor to the table. I bring vibrancy. Your dreams are boring. That's why you don't want to stay with it. Nobody wants to kick it with somebody who's boring. You'd be like, yeah, because I'm about to go now. I got one. People come to see me or people come to my house or people come into my life. You, you ever have the situations where your friend be at the door for an hour? My kids. When, when we have family dinner, they, they say they're going to leave at 11 o'clock, 9, 10, 11 o'clock. 1, 2 o'clock, they be leaving because they at the door for an hour because we kicking it. Why? Because I add flavor and color. You know, stop playing regular. It doesn't suit you. It just doesn't suit you. We're supposed to be that flavor in the earth. So vibrancy to your dreams, vibrancy and, and color to your dreams. Mean. My, people get mad around me with my phone and my computer. Guess what? I turn the light all the way up. Shine the light on. Shine the light. I need to see. <laughs> I need to see. I need to see. I'm often doing graphics and stuff. I need to see. So, so, so vibrancy to your dreams. Vibrancy as excitement. And and listen to this. And draws attraction. The, the reason why people get irritated with me with my phone and my computer, turn it around. Why? Because the light is shining so bright. I'm, I'm preaching and y'all just still not getting it. You said you was the light of the world. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it. And let me tell you something about light. A little light goes a long way in darkness. Teach, girl. I'm just, I'm, yeah. So when people try to act like you not. You are, because I am. A little bit of light goes a long way in darkness. You got a dark room, turn the lighter on. You, I mean, you, you'll be like, wait, what's, what's that? You know, you ever have the shades and a little bit of light peep through? You'll be like, close the shade. That little bit of light in a dark room goes a long way. And so you have to understand that if you're going to live a resurrected life, plan to be light. I plan to be light everywhere I go. I'm coming into a party. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh -uh, it's not going to be this dead in here. I've decided I'm going to shake things up. I decided I'm going to change. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to fit in the, with the status quo. I decided that I'm going to make Jesus known everywhere I go. I have the power to do that. So I got to turn the light up on my dreams. I got to turn the light up on my life and my ministry and my anointing. You, you understand what I'm saying? I am an atmosphere changer and shifter. I want y'all to say that. If, if atmosphere stay the same, even if people get mad, I was talking to my husband the other day because I was sharing with him that when I go places, sometimes I don't, I feel like I'd be killing it. <laughs> Siobhan, come get me because that's funny because I really do. I feel like I'd be killing it. And I feel like people enjoy me. 
But I also feel like for the first few moments, people are inspecting me. They think they know what I'm about. They inspect everything that I do and what I say and how I respond and all of that kind of stuff. And I got to stop caring about that. I mean, I want to represent God in everything that I do, but God called me to be me. And if I bring a unique flavor, let's get this party started. Let's get it started in here. I'm, I'm not coming to be regular. And any host that bring me, you know what you were getting. And, and so spice it up. Add vibrancy to every area of your life. Add vibrancy to your marriage. 25 years of marriage will be, I'll be married 25 years. Okay, I know I look about 27. I'll be married 25 years, but listen to this. You got to spice it. You got to change the, turn the light up. You got to change the vibrancy because listen to this. LeBron is a great basketball player. His bad days is better than most, but he don't play the same. He doesn't play the same. Like when he, he had to adjust his game to, to, to adapt to his age and his physical limitations. Work on another part of your game, T. <laughs> Work on another part of your game. You might be called to a certain area of business and ministry, but you got to change up. You can still be dominant. I was telling Melissa, you know, I, I feel a shift in my life. I feel a shift in my life. And it's not that I'm going to stop empowering. I'm just going to do it another way. This is so good. I'm just going to do it another way. The Lord is speaking to me about doing things easier. It's going to be more effective, but it's going to be easier. It's not, it's not that I'm not going to work hard, but we overcomplicate things. And I'm combing through my life and businesses and ministry to look at, okay, yeah, that was too deep. We had too many layers to that. We don't have to do it that way. Jesus was very simple. He would come and bring a message. He would go from house to house. <coughs> it was simple, but deep. And I think we, we overcome, come, I don't know what word I'm trying to say. We make it complex. I told you before my my um my my situation with my face. I think I got a beautiful face. I do. Oh, it don't look that beautiful right now. Anyway, I think I got a beautiful face. And every so often I go on this kick about skincare. And I'll go to Avino and all those other places and go get skincare stuff. And I'm really gonna work on my skin. You only get one face. I go through all of this drama. By the time they get to the sixth step, I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. I'll buy it, but I ain't gonna do it. If it goes past Cleanser, toner, and moisturizer. I'm not going to do it. Not going to. Why? Because it's too complex. Simplify your life and amplify it. Which, that seems like a contradiction. A, a oxymoron. Well, listen. No, I'm saying simplify. Make less steps, but make it louder. Make less steps. You, you ever go to a potluck? And they got a teaspoon full of potato salad and then a teaspoon full of, and they ran out. I saw somebody with yams. We ran out of yams. I'd rather you have more of the same thing that's good than a teaspoon full of this and that. I'm, I'm, I'm Y'all can take it for what it's worth. All right. So number one is vibrancy. Number two is valiance. Valiance. Let's define it for the saints. <laughs> number two is valiance. Hold on. Um, be valiant in, let me, let me define it. I want to just say it correctly. Like the Webster's dictionary It's showing bravery or boldness It's showing courage, right? So, so valiant. All right. So you have to, you have to be vibrant, but you have to be valiant, be valiant in your quest for a resurrected life, courageously overcoming obstacles. Let me give you some scripture on it because you, you gotta be, you gotta be courageous. Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I don't fear because God is with me. I'm going to sing my country song. Y'all want to sing? If Beyonce can sing country, I can sing country. Be bold, be strong for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold, be strong for the Lord thy God is with me. I am not afraid. I am not ashamed. I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory for the Lord. Mm -mm. Thy God 
is with thee. Listen, I gotta be bold. I don't know where I pulled it up from, probably vacation Bible school. But you know, I'm I'm the things that I, I make bold steps and I just don't care. One, let me go carnal first. Who gonna check me, boo? Like, what what you gonna do? You know, stop living your life and dreams like you can get in trouble. I mean, you can get in trouble with God, but other than that, I've decided I'm going to live another level of lifestyle. When I tell you no man knows the day, I have a weird way of thinking of things. I really do. And I said to my husband this morning, I said, you know, there's always the day before. And what I was talking about, please don't turn me off. It sounds morbid. It's always the day before death. There was always the day before somebody died. And since no man know the day or the hour, I'm going to live my life. Like, I'm I'm serious. I, you, no, It's always the day before a tragedy. You didn't know it was going to happen. You, We cannot take for granted. And when your granny said it, you're like, oh, granny, get out of here. Because granny been talking about Jesus is coming for a long time. you like, he ain't come. Yeah, it's been two weeks and he didn't come. But when 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 you understand the weight and the gravity of your or your of your mortality, even though we're living to live again, you better live your life. I decided I'm gonna live my life. I could be disappointed one second and the next second I'll be like, where are we getting ready to eat? Because I've decided I can't stay there. Since he got up, I have the power to get up. Being stuck there doesn't serve my purpose. Being stuck there doesn't serve my purpose. Some of you are stuck in relationships. And what I mean by that is that your marriages, you're stuck in unforgiveness. It doesn't serve you. Unforgiveness hurts you. You don't want to got to keep thinking about this stuff. When I thought about it, I'm like, I'm staying at a place that's hurting me. Don't choose to stay stuck. You can literally decide. I'm going to forgive and just move on because I'm the one that's up. I'm the one that's feeling some type of way. Do y'all y'all get what I'm saying? Okay, so but you, but I got to be courageous. I got to be courageous on so many levels. I got to admit where I am and I got to do something about it and I got to put in the work. I got to put in the work to change. I got to put in the work to shift. And I can't change my husband. I can't change my children, but I can change myself as a wife and a mother. I can change. All I can do is what I can do. See, see, it's easy. My husband said it on Sunday. It's easy to do inspection, but introspection, that's when you got to be bold to really take a look at you. You like, okay. And, and it, it is not always pretty, but, but, but God is bigger. All right. So everybody say valiant. Hey, yo, that's your word for today. Everybody say valiant. Find a way to use it in a sentence today. When talking to your coworkers, we have to be very valiant in this department so that we can make the shifts and changes we need for the, for the next fiscal year. You find a way to use it. Okay, we're going to educate here on ridiculous faith. All right. Then we talk about vision, vibrancy vibrancy, valiance, and then we're going to talk about virtue. We're going to talk about virtue. Everybody say virtue. All right. So virtue, when you talk about virtue, let me get to my notes. We talk about virtue is, is is that guides your vision, acting with integrity and honor. What's your character like? Many of you want a pay raise, but you need a character raise. You need a character because without a character raise, you'll squander that. A car- can God trust you? That's the question that you need to ask. Let me give you some scripture. Can God trust you? Virtue. Finally, brethren and sisters, what, what, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. That's that's uh, Philippians 4, 8. What's your character like? Can you be trusted? Now let's let's go through this because many people, y'all, I love you. I love y'all. Can you need to work on your character first just by returning phone calls? Put it in your phone so you won't be a liar. A liar is burning hell. Okay. Like you have to decide. I'm just gonna simple things like that is important. You ever somebody be like, I'll call you back. You like you, the reason why I, let me tell you, if you don't want to get this, I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to bust it up right now for real. You get ready. To, uh, Feel some type of way if this is you. If if people talk to you and say, Tara, 
Um, call me back in um 20 minutes. I need you to call me back. Tara, for real though, to like seriously call me back. Don't, or I'm gonna call you back in 10 minutes, Tara. Um, answer, Tara, please answer. That's saying something about if people do that to you, I just, I just, I just expose something in you. That's your integrity. They don't trust you because either when I call Tara back, she don't answer. I'm just picking on you, Tara. But either Tara don't answer when I call her back, or she ain't gonna call back. And so that you can <laughs> I just let you know that if people say that to you. That's why they're saying it, because you can't be trusted. If they say, Sheree, you ain't going to come. Are you going to come for real? Don't just say it. Are you serious? That means, why are you always lying? Listen, so work on your character. You don't mean no harm. <laughs> you just do little white lies. Get your inter uh, your character. And, and stop saying you're going to do stuff that you, this is little stuff. Come on, everybody say character and integrity. Talking about food. You're talking about all these people, and then you like, I don't understand. Like, you, it, it, you, character. Let's get your character. Okay, let me go, let me go a step further. Single women. Oh, I'm a single lady. Almost. Oh, I feel like this is the season for the single ladies to get everything they want. But ma'am, you're gonna have to get your character together now. Talk about I want him fit, fine, and <laughs> financially stable. You got bad credit. You're never at the gym. Like you are requesting something literally that you don't qualify for. Teach girl, you are doing a lot on Tuesday. Your character. How you demanding something you're not? Oh, that was deep. Oh, let me go a little further. I'm a king's a millionaire. Girl, you don't pay tithes or so now. You No, you're not. You're going to be working for the man. You're going to be in debt like you are. I mean, because you don't even do things God's way. You don't qualify. Your, your, your character can't hold it. The minute you get money, you thought that it was a good idea to pay shop, go shopping and not pay up, pay up on your bills. You, you thought. You got bills that are due months. In the, that's a snapshot. Your, your credit. Your bills is a snapshot of your integrity. Teach Pastor Monica. You know, when you got that credit card, you sign something called a promissory note. And that promissory note says, um, I promise to pay. Now, you mad at those folks for calling you. Uh, 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 what's your name? Uh, don't call on Sunday. <laughs> Y'all get mad at the, the creditors. Don't call me on Sunday. This is the Lord's Day. Ma'am, you spent the, you used the, y'all lucky, y'all y'all didn't get me. I wasn't one of those credit. I'm like, oh yeah, well, we see here that you used the credit card on the Lord's Day. You went to the buffet. You went to, now you don't want us to call. Integrity. Some of the most challenging things that I've had financially with people paying invoice and stuff is from the saints, the church folk. Most of my clientele is from church. So any outstanding, I'm not looking at nobody, any outstanding, outstanding invoices and stuff is usually somebody's pastor or somebody. I'm not trying to be smart. I'm like, you you can't preach on integrity and then don't have it. Always trying to get a hookup. Like, no, like what? What are we doing? I'm doing too much, y'all. Okay, sorry. Like everybody was trying to figure out what the deal is. There, there's no deal. It, it's it's this is how much it costs. I'm going to move on. Y'all don't want me to keep going. Integrity, time is a snapshot of your character. You show up late and you're showing that you devalue whatever is being put on, whether it's a whether it's church or work, you don't value it when you show up late. I'm just going to drink some of my tea right now. When you show up late and you tell me a whole lot about your life. If you're not diligent with time, you ain't diligent with your life. You ain't diligent with your marriage. You're not diligent with your children because time is not of the essence to you. So you showed me that your marriage got out of line a long time ago, but because you didn't value time, you wasn't on it teach pastor my i'm trying i'm trying to do the best i can with what i have to work with you just say ouch i can tell how your kids got out of line and out of order because you didn't address it in time 
I'm just going to, I'm just, shut up, Tara. Tara talking about sliding in service like Eddie Kane. You, why do you ever, why do people ever do, that literally draws attention to yourself. I'm like, oh, the lady with her hand up. That's who's getting ready to go to the bathroom, the lady that's pointing up. I might not have noticed had you not pointed. But, but, but time. <laughs> T. Michelle joined us and said, I don't even have kids. And I felt that. I felt like you, you, you have to address stuff in time. If you, if time is not important to you, you'll let stuff go. Cause you think it's only 10 minutes. It's only five minutes. What could have happened in those 10 minutes or five minutes? What could have happened is Jesus showed up. You could have gotten your answer. What if the, your answer came five minutes before you, before you got there? Time matters. And when people don't value your time, they don't. Oh, this is too much. I'm sorry, y'all. They don't value you. You don't value. You don't value me when you don't value my time. When people say, you know, can I get a minute PM? Do you know how much a minute costs for me? You know how much I make a minute? Value my time. We're not getting ready to kick it. I got kingdom work to do. Come on, y'all. Can I help you? Do you value your, your, your children's time? See, I know you want them to value your time, but do you value their time? Your adult children come over. They don't have, they don't want to just come to hear you fuss and nag. Can you just enjoy the moment? Something may be wrong and they got some stuff that they issues they need to fix. But this time, everybody said time. This time we just go and love on each other. This time I'm going to get all in their face and like, mom, stop, stop. I'm going to do all of that. That's what I'm going to do this time. Because time matters. Something happens that next day and you'll wonder, what did I do with the time? I'm telling you, let me speak right now. No more wasted time. Make everything count. Make everything intentional. Let's be very intentional about our time together. Hallelujah. Many of you haven't finished your books or the projects and all the stuff you have because you think you have time. I ain't saying nothing's going to happen to you physically, but I'm saying you don't know what, what, what's in store for you. That's why every time I get a piece of time, I try to do something super productive because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Tomorrow, it, I'm not saying, again, nothing tragic. It could just be very busy. Something happens in ministry and I got to take care of that. But the day that I didn't have anything to do, I didn't value the time. I'm driving my point home for a reason. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, there's always the day before the diagnosis. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? Am I, am I making sense, y'all? Like, like, we really have to value time. Don't live in regret because you didn't value time. Okay, I'm going to move on. You're like, okay, PM. <laughs> Vitality. Wait, wait, let me go back to, to I got to go back to virtual integrity and honor. You don't pay your bills on time and you starting a business, ma'am, you better crop, you better call crop failure and try to get it together because you're going to reap what you've sown. That's why I'm very careful. I try to get the best deals wherever I go, but I don't heckle entrepreneurs. Why? I mean, I don't, Um, what do you call it? Not heckle. What do you call it? Haggle. Because I don't want people doing that to me. You read what you saw. And even people in my family who are not entrepreneurs, I'm like, don't do that. Cause I that that I, I don't want it close to me. Cause I don't want to do that. I, I just don't want to do it. What's the price? And I can either decide whether I want to pay it or not, but I don't want to do that. Whatsoever a man so is that, shall he also read. I, I believe the word too much for me to do that. Right? All right. All right, the next one, I'm, I'm going on. The next one is vitality, vitality, vigor and vitality. Okay, listen, ain't nobody signing up to help you with your dreams if you lethargic with them yourself. We we, we got to have vitality. All right, so, so what am I saying? Foster vitality by nurturing physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. You, a lot of times you can't be enthusiastic about your dreams because you don't have no energy. Teach, Pastor. All right, let's let's get a scripture. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Vitality. Do you add life to the situation? 
You can't you can't be have vitality and talk down in the dumps. Yeah, because I don't know how we're gonna make ain't nobody signing up to help you, sis. Ain't nobody signing up for a sinking ship. Nobody wants to be behind a parts car I'm talking about people say I move too fast. You move too slow. Look at that. But I'm moving. I'm always moving. Stagnation, I don't I don't know nothing about that. And 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 I move too much too fast for people who I'm going to preach, preach to some of y'all A-type personalities who have to have all your ducks in a row. I'm not saying don't plan. I'm not saying don't. But what I'm saying is I do more moving than you do planning. Just waiting. Just waiting. you just waiting for the right time. That was 10 years ago. you waiting for times change. So even the plan that you had 10 years ago won't even work now because we don't even use that no more. So like, no, I, I just I just move. I move. He's always moving, and I, so I move with him. I need you to understand that if he said we're going to be like him and he created this whole universe in six days, sound like he be moving too. Huh? You, know, you say, okay, I never thought about it. Like, okay, I made a point, right? Like, he's always moving. And the evening and the morning was the third day, and he created something else, and the heaven was above the firmament. That was the first day. You are grateful for the heavens, but that was so yesterday. Today I'm making seed. The third day he made seed. He made the animals and all. I mean, he was, he was doing, God was moving. God was moving. <laughs> Stop me when I lie. God was moving. Pastor Monica, you just, now, now make up your mind. You either want him to move quickly or you want him to slow down. I'm only called to the overdue and the overdue don't have time to wait. You've been, you've been due teach pastor my no seriously you've been do the enemy strategy he know you're not gonna curse god and die he know you're not gonna say there is no god he knows you're not gonna talk bad about god so what he what does he get you to do procrastinate you're not gonna say there is no god you're not going to say that God is not able and all that kind of stuff. But what you will tell him is no. And what you will tell him is wait. And God, and, and listen to this, and the enemy gets you to tell him no and wait by procrastination. And I'm telling the truth. You tell him no all the time. God tell you to speak to a person or say something to a person. Oh, I started to. You know, such and such has been going through a lot. You know, I started to call her the other day. You told God no. Just say, oh, that was Tuesday I had told him no. Because that's what you did. He told you to do something. You didn't do it. You found out. If you have to wait to proof for you to act and respond, what do you need the Holy Ghost for? You don't need the Holy Ghost. If you ain't going to never listen, you're not going to listen. You'll never listen. You wait for something. The world has to wait till something happens. The Holy Ghost tells me ahead of time. Period. You make that phone call. Oh my God. You know, it's funny that you would call me my Kia. I've just been going through a lot right now. You feel good when you obey God. Don't you feel good when you obey God? I'm asking a question. Don't y'all feel good when you obey God? So if you feel good when you obey God, why are you still not obeying God? Because you know what it's like to obey God and feel good. Right? Obeying God is not always easy, but it's always worth it. It's not always easy. Sometimes I got to do things and I'll be like, Jesus. But I feel good that I obeyed him. All right. And obedience is, is, is obeying God and not knowing love. I don't know how he's going to fix it. I don't know how he's going to fix it. I don't know. I'm going to leave the how to him though. Because I'm not responsible for it. He is. I'm not responsible for it. L listen, look, can I minister to you? I'm not responsible for it. He is. I just have to keep showing up round after round. I got to stay in my position to fight the good fight of faith. And then I'm going to win in the end. All of that stuff in the meantime and in the middle, I don't know how. I'm, I'm confessing to you as a leader. I don't know how. I'm just going to be in position. So when he shows up, I'm like, you did what you said. You always be doing too much. I love you, Jesus. 
Jesus do too much. He do, he do, he do exceedingly abundantly above all I'm able to ask or think. So since I know that's his history and his pattern, I can keep showing up with confidence that he's going to show up for me. He's going to show up for me. He's go. I need y'all to say he's going to show up for me. You clapping for everybody else and don't even recognize and realize he's going to show up for you. He died for you too. That this week I'll be like, Lord, I love you. <laughs> Cause I be tripping sometimes and you did it for me too. As unfaithful and as uncommitted. And I be going back and forth and back and forth and forth and back. And you still did it for me too. Like that blows my mind. Oh my God. He did it for me. Oh, I love him. Listen. Oh, you know, I thought of that old choir song. I feel like busting out crying right now. Uh, what's that song? He he would not come down from the cross. I don't know if I'm going to write melody. Just to save himself. Why did I start on out to know? Y'all know that song? He decided to die. Okay, anyway. He would not come down off the cross to save himself, but he decided to die just for me. Just for me. Just for me. Jesus came and did it just. Okay, I'm gonna have my whole res res resurrection playlist. Okay, this. I mean, he did it for me. Like seriously, I gotta show up for him because he did it for me. I gotta show up for him because he did it for me. He did it for me. Sheree just loved me because I was not singing good. Okay, I was in the key of Z. But you know what? He did it for me. Like I'm. I just. Ooh, I'm overwhelmed. You know what, Toshiba, the thing that overwhelms me is I don't even know if I would do it for me. Knowing what I know about me. <laughs> but he did it for me. I need you to think about that. Think about the worst thing that you've ever done or said or did not do. And you need to understand that he knew that and still did it for you. He still did it for you. That's the least you can do is worship him. The least you can do is serve him. The least you can do is praise him. The least you can do is tell everybody about him. That's the least that you can do. All right. Then the last one is victory. Huh? First Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say victory. I mean, I got victory. Aim for victory in every endeavor. So celebrate each achievement and step towards your ultimate vision. Okay, so here's the thing. Celebrate this game, but realize this is not the finals. Okay, let me say it again. Celebrate this game, but realize it's not the finals. So so, so victory is important, but victory is built with, with, with a consec. Oh, God, I love you. Listen to this. Victory is had, like when somebody wins a, a tournament or whatever, it is it's consecutive wins. Somebody type consecutive. Sound it out. Somebody uh, write consecutive wins. I, I declare that this is your season of consecutive wins. That's going to lead to victory. One game ain't going to do it. One game is not going to do it. You got to have consecutive wins. And let me tell you something. When you have consecutive wins, you build momentum. I was watching a game yesterday with Caitlin Clark and, and everything like that. And so they were not doing as well. They're used to winning by 80 points. And, I mean, scoring like 80 um, and something points in the game. And they it wasn't looking that great. And the team that they were playing um, had a chance to win it until they pulled out. And they pulled out. You don't give your opponent that much of a lead. And my husband's like, oh man, it's too late now. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Even when it looks like it's close, I, 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 you know, I got to still keep playing because I can put, I have a habit of winning. So even when it looks close, I got to keep my head in the game and realize who I am. Caitlin, just, she's like, I'm the number one seed. Like y'all tripping. I don't care if you double team me or what. You need all that man manpower. That's why you got to divert. Somebody write this down. That's why you got to diversify your game. You got to diversify your game because, because I'm such a threat to Shiva. Listen to this. And it's the truth, even in the kingdom. Attacks be coming at me, and I don't even understand why. But because I'm such a threat, people, you know, not people, but the enemy will double team me. But that's why I know how to pass the ball. I'm learning how to pass the ball. 
a real winner is not just concerned about their stats. Teach girl. A real winner is not just concerned about her stats. That's why we have these books and stuff that's coming out to the kingdom. I can't wait some more of you. I got books coming this weekend. I got other books coming next week and stuff like that. Because guess what? I got. I wrote all of those books for myself. But but I realized that the enemy comes after me, so we got to confuse him. I got to pass the ball. I got to pass the ball. I got to pass the ball. I have to pass the ball. That's what I have to do. I have to pass the ball. Let's circulate this. Let's circulate the ball, for real. So you got to understand that victory happens when you strengthen other players around you. That's why I tell people more is caught than taught. When people shrink back, I'm like, you're making a mistake. Why? More is caught than taught. And if you caught this much in a year or two years, can you imagine what you would catch? I'm always evolving and always growing. So more is caught than taught. So victory, victory. That's why I love the older players in the NBA who are still on the roster. They on there. They may not have as many um, playing time. They may not play, you know, immediately. They may not start. But they're great leadership for the team because they have the experience in winning. Come on, y'all, Pastor Monica. I'm I'm used to winning, y'all. I'm used to everything I put my hands to win. Yesterday we had a conference call with the people that's going to, and that wasn't even half of the people. I have um I have about 15 couples going. There's, I have more couples going to Singapore than I've ever had in any in any conference that we had um a, abroad. And I'm looking at this this virtual room full of people, and I'm like, some people are happy to have that at a conference in the States, a conference on a computer or whatever. And these are people that's literally going halfway across the world. I win all the time. I have a habit of winning. It makes sense for you to hang with me because I'm a winner, period. I know strategies to win. I got something that I looked at the numbers on something that I'm doing, and I don't like the way they look. Guess what I'm doing? I got a telemarketing day. I got my big thing of iced tea. I'm going to get some water, y'all. Stop. I'm going to drink water. And I got my list up, and I got calls to make, and I just got it. Why? Because I don't lose. So whatever I have to do to win is what I do to win. Say I don't lose. Here's my issue with you. When you when you put something out and it doesn't go the way that you thought it would go, what, what's up with that? I got one spiritual daughter. First of all, one girl is not my spiritual daughter, but one girl did a book with me. Um, she just released it. She got our box of books came in. She said she opened the books and, and hustled and sold 10 books within the first 10 minutes. You, you understand that at $20, she made $200 in the first 10 minutes. And so her goal now is to sell 20 books a day. So 20 books a day at, is it 10 books a day? I think she said 10 books a day. Her goal is to sell 10 books a day. That's another $200 that she added to her income. Let's do 200 times. Let's just say five if she's just going to do five times uh, a week and not the weekends. Uh, she's going to do the weekends because I know her. So you're talking about seven times um, 200. That's an extra $1,400 a week. So an extra $1,400 with typically when months have four weeks. So you got one, two, three, four, four times four is 16. So we got $5,600. Like, are you kidding me? Y'all playing, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. Even if she didn't do all that, she did half of that. She added to her income. Something that she created that she's going to get paid over and over and over for. What are y'all doing? When you see other people winning with a tool you have, then you adapt. I lost you already. When you see people winning with the tool you have, then you adapt. And so, yeah, like, no. Um, I'm too smart to be broke. I'm too smart to lose. I have too many ways to make, Marquia, write this down. I got too many ways to make it. I have too many, literally, I have too many ways to make it. I can preach a little bit. I'm trying to be modest a little bit. You know? <laughs> I can preach. I can make it that way. Smart as a whip as a business coach. I mean, strategic. Okay. I can win that way. I am an awesome mentor. I can win that way. 
I got tons of product. I can win that way. I'm creating so many ways to win. That's what, that's all I'm trying to impart to you is that you can build your business, build your ministry, build your life, build your character, build your relationships, build your partnerships. You got I got too many ways to win. Too many ways to win. I'm just creating ways. I'm just creating ways. I'm just creating ways. I've been ministering to people all week about marriage. It's been attacks on marriages and things like that. I probably need to go and do something real quick about for marriages. I got too many ways. I got too much experience with God. I got too much experience in the kingdom. I can teach on seed. I can just do a whole series on seed. I can create a whole empire on just seed. God knows I know how to talk. I'm finishing up my book as we speak today called I Have What I Say. I have what I say. It's straight from the scriptures. I have what I say. And it's not a confession book. It doesn't have faith confessions in it, but it's literally teaching people how to talk. I'm going to teach you the, the language of the kingdom, which is faith. Talk right. I got too many ways to win. My gifts has Masha, the kingdom of darkness surrounded. Somebody write that for me, send it to me. My gifts have the kingdom of darkness surrounded. There's no way for him to win. You hear that foolishness around me? My gifts have the kingdom of darkness surrounded. <laughs> My gifts have the kingdom of darkness. I got so many gifts that he can't win. I got too many ways to win. I got too y'all, Misty. I'm about to. I feel like dancing. I have too many ways to win. I'm not stuck in this tomb. What? It's been predestined for me to win. Okay. Spoiler alert. I get up. <laughs> Woo! Spoiler alert. I'm healed. Spoiler alert. I'm rich. I'm happy. Marisha, that is crazy. That's my sister from the Bahamas, my little sister from the Bahamas. You got too many ways to win. She's fine as heck. Your face be beat. I don't, I don't know. If you, you know but face be beat up. Okay. She's a she's a somebody singer. Like she she's a she's not just a singer. She's a psalmist, a prophetic psalmist. She's super strategic. She got 159 jobs. I'm not crazy about that, but you know, I love you. She know, but she knows how to do everything. Program director for a radio station. I mean, she do, she got too many ways to win. Now, I don't know if y'all gonna like this. Stop allowing people to take advantage of you. See, okay, how do how can I say this? A lot of times you bring the secret sauce to every situation and people will try to act like it's you, they helping you out. Girl, I bring, I bring the juice. Is this helpful? I bring the juice. So a lot of people, because they don't want you to really recognize, yeah, no, you didn't bring the burger, which is easily seen. You didn't bring the bun that was easily seen. You didn't bring the cheese, the lettuce and tomatoes that's easily seen. But it's something about that burger. That little sauce, like I don't know what that is, that makes the difference. And many times you don't realize you're the sauce. And people try to make you feel like you're insignificant. I mean, I can have a burger without you. Right. But that's not what's making it valuable. That's not what's making people. It's the sauce that I bring. And so, yeah. Stop shrinking back, y'all. I'm the sauce. Like, and, I, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Some of y'all go to Chick-fil-A. Y'all cannot go to Chick-fil-A. What's that sauce called? They be like, give me the, uh, my son's. The what? The Polynesian sauce. Give me the Polynesian sauce. When you understand your value, you won't allow people to abuse it. Now, I'm telling you, up what you bring to the table. Perfect what you bring to the table. 
I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. I, I just, day one, we talked about resurrecting your dreams. Day two, we talked about resurrecting your vision. I need to see clearly. Don't have the tools that you need and not focus. Teach, girl. We talking about vision, right? Baby, can you focus on me? Don't have the tools you need and not focus. You got what you need to write a book. You just not focus. You got what you need to start the ministry, but you just not focus. You have huh, what you need huh, to start the business. Huh, you're just not focused. Ooh. Focus. You keep letting people, thank you. You keep letting people take your focus. They didn't call you. You've had people, my number comes up private, so people always call me. Did you call me? Because I had a private number. No, I would have texted if you didn't answer or called to left a message. So, but, but, but yeah, no. Stop answering the people who didn't call you. I just. You're trying to get people to judge what he said. Literally, I want you to think about that. You're trying to get people to judge. You know, the Lord told me to do it. What you think about that? That don't even mix. What do you mean? God said, and you asking me what I think, girl, bye. Don't even try to get me in on that conversation. Don't, don't. You can ask me how you think I should pull it off. PM, do you have any suggestions or strategies on how I can make it happen? But please do not ask me to judge what you said God said. He said, I don't have to say. My arm's too short to box with God. You know what? Marisha said, I need a book written by August. I'm going to call you. Okay. Well, somebody tell her. <laughs> we did, Marisha, we did 60 books since January. I think I could get it done by August. I'm writing books, helping to produce books for. Um, I think it's like 15, 10 or 15 in the Bahamas already. I got you. Toy, shut up. Toy said it'll be done tomorrow. <laughs> Toy said it's done tomorrow. That's what it is. That's what it, that's my time frames. <laughs> Lady D said your book is done. Says, oh my God, Lady D, your book is good. But I knew it. Lady book is serious. Lady D is serious. It's serious. These are serious kingdom mandates. This book right here, though, I'm not even going to lie. All of them are great. This book I just read, though. I Listen, okay. I tried to thumb through this book. I'm going to be honest. I was falling asleep the other day, and I like to look at the book. I like to look at the books to see, you know, Siobhan's part was was is, is awesome. Is really awesome. And I did not, I learned something about Siobhan. I'm not going to tell it, Siobhan. I learned something about Siobhan that I did not know um, in this book. And I was like, oh, okay. This is probably why she's such a sunshine. I'm not saying nothing, Siobhan. So anyway, faith, the currency of the kingdom. When I tell you, I tried to thumb through this book the other day going to sleep, Siobhan. And I said, I, I, was, I was like, let me read it real quick. The journey that promises to be nothing short of transformative faith, the currency of the kingdom is not just a book, but a catalyst for a radical shift in perspective, a tool that empowers, uplifts, written by Pastor Monica Haskell and Siobhan Kimbra. Now, anyway, so I'm going down and it talks about we're no strangers to trials and, and you know, triumphs and all of that kind of stuff. And it talks about faith, integrating faith. And when I tell you, next thing I know, I'm reading, reading, I'm like, put the book down. I could not put this book down faith the currency of the kingdom she got it on a website you need to get i'm like this is a kingdom manual that needs to go around get to any of that big in the in the um koji ain't super tender or something he this need to go you need to be doing workshops at all of them churches not just koji churches all the churches all of y'all with books I ain't even going to lie, but I only have two books here. So if I'm not saying your book, it's just because I don't have it in front of me. But this one too, Start Smart. Me and Lady Tangie Coke, she's a serial entrepreneur and she's a multimillionaire. We did a book called Start Smart. Many of you trying to start businesses, but you don't know. We got faith those strategies to help you start smart. I'm telling you, this stuff, I'm going to have a whole library. A whole library. A whole library. 
And I don't believe certain people, I'm not even calling y'all out. People like Toya. <laughs> I cannot believe that y'all letting people who met me yesterday have a book out with me. D Devana, I didn't even call your name. You didn't have to say nothing. She's in the closet. I'm like, oh my God. I cannot believe that people who met me yesterday have a book coming out with me that they're going to have for the rest of their lives. I just, I don't understand, but I'm, I'm just, <laughs> woo. And so next week I'm not doing it no more. <laughs> And then y'all going to be trying to call, but PM, I'm not doing it no more. Like, I'm just not. I already told Melissa. I said, we're done. I think I got 10 slots, and then we're done. I keep increasing it by 10, and then I'm done. And then I'm not, because I got stuff to do. I got, like, 50 more books I have to write by June. So, anyway, I love you, Saints. Anyway, it's time to sew. Yeah, I'm sure you got beat up today, but it, it was a good beat down. So um, PM Global One is the cash at PayPal is PM at PastorMonica.com. Zell is Lady M Haskell at AOL.com. Some of you have been sewing already. A hundredfold return. Tara, a hundredfold return. Dr. Laura, a hundredfold return. Misty, a hundredfold return. Um, Yvonne, a hundredfold return. Talana, a hundredfold return. Amber, a hundredfold return. Rodney, a hundredfold return in this season. Um, we need some more of you to sell PM Global One. You were blessed. You didn't stumble upon this TikTok. You didn't stumble upon this website. God knew, needed you to be here so you could hear something, so you could get your life and be who God called you to be so that you can clarify your vision and be everything that God called you to be. I have a few announcements to make. So I need y'all to, I need y'all to sow right now in Jesus name. I declare a hundredfold return in this season. I declare that we have sowers for this ministry. We have partners for this ministry so that we can, so all sufficiency in all things uh, may abound to every good work and charitable donation. Because I give men gifts to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. He gives seed to the sower. He gives seed to the sower. And so um, PM Global One is the cash app. PayPal is PM at PastorMonica.com. Zell is Lady M. Haskell at AO.com. So to those of you who will sow later, um, you'll watch this work class later. I declare a hundredfold return in this season. I may not call your name, but God knows. God knows. God knows. He knows your name. Uh, Sister Vanessa, a hundredfold return in this season. I would not I would not be in this season of, of, of not sowing. This is resurrection week. And I would get my seed in the ground. Um, so I will. We will wait a few more minutes, and and I'm believing God. Tiffany, a hundredfold return in this season. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I'm in agreement with you. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I love you. I want to share something with you. I um I'm going to do a hard push this week for the marketplace. Let me tell you my my vision for the marketplace, the expo, that is going to be an environment of increase. It's going to be an environment of increase. I got. I want you to imagine a 15,000 square foot building and tables everywhere that when people go, I want people with business opportunities to, to have a table. I want people with products to have a table. If you have services like my coaches, I was like, have your, you know, have a special, have something there for people to participate in. I want people to be empowered um, at this. And I need you guys to help me. It's one of the fun raisers I'm doing again for my conference in Singapore. And so it's 129 for a table. So if you have bracelets, you have t-shirts, you have books, you have whatever you have, it is um it is 129. And and um Toya, I know you have an, an event or whatever, but I'm like, girl, you better get somebody to sell your products. You still got products. See that's when you boss in. Okay. We out here in such and such and and I got a vending event somewhere else. How you that's the power of, I'm just putting it out there. So we only have a few tables left. And so I need y'all to support the table. Um, Misty, I told um, Rico, um, I was going to do the cafe. I was going to literally have my team do the cafe so that we could just raise, you know, raise money for it. Expos, you be paying for food. Okay, you got to pay for food. And so, but then I thought about Rico and I'm like, his food be good. And he can um, advertise and get more clients. I said I would offer a special to the expo people. I don't know if he told you. Um, 
to the expo people, but he can pay for 129 and have the whole cafe and serve his meals outside of that. You know we be hungry. Okay. We got fish in the back, fried fish in the back, but we can have barbecue in the front. And listen, because you know, my kid, what are we gonna do? We might eat a fish sandwich now, take the barbecue for dinner or vice versa. You know, we're gonna get something for later too. So that's just a great shut up, Tui. I'm hungry now. She said, make and sell his sauce, all of that. So, so I'm telling you, this expo is going to be, I'm putting my heart, soul in it. I need y'all to get these tables. Okay. I need y'all to get these tables. And then we have speaker slots. That's going to be powerful too. You got all these people coming in. You got to make sure, um, make sure you do that. Okay. I love you guys so much. Tomorrow is her church day. Um, those of you, you know, I need to see y'all at your respective services. God has been speaking to me about her church. So, um, he, oh, he's speaking. So I want to see y'all at the services. Um, and then Good Friday service is at noon. We are serving our first communion. So if you're a part of her church, you got to get your crackers and your juice because we're doing communion for the very first time. I am so excited about that. Okay. My husband said, you got it. You licensed and ordained for 20 years. Okay. So, um, so we're having our first communion at her church. Um, and so not tomorrow. We, we have a her church tomorrow, but on Good Friday. And then seven last words of the cross um, is our very first um, service. So I want everybody from every service on there that Friday. I want everybody that can be on to be on that Zoom. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much. You're amazing. I got work to do. Diana, 100 fold return. Cheryl, 100 fold return. Siobhan, 100 fold return in this season. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. And...